Hi, I'm Ben Benson, or Ben Hookset here on the channel. This is another episode of Education with in Indigenous Harvesting. Today I'm out here with the mission of harvesting two fish for a naming ceremony. I've been asked by one of the community members to bring in some fish for them. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. But for now, there's a lot of fish right behind me and I wanna see if I can get one right now. Fish. That's a really strong fish. Oh, they're all scattering. They are all scattering. That's that okay. is a strong, strong fish. Holy heck, that has a lot of power. We're gonna try to gain a little control, but we have none. He's going down. Oh, that holy. My word, that is a strong fish. Let it tire. Stop going downstream, my boy. Duck. Oh my god. Duck got stuck on the line. Oh god, I think I have that on camera. Duck interference. Oh my god, that's a strong fish. Oh, I see him just moving the... I, I don't... Oh, he's scattering every fish in town. They're still okay. They're still down there. This hurts my arms. I am having... That is freaking strong. He's digging himself into the mud. I see that. And into the structure down there. Let go, it broke. That's okay, it was a big guy, hey? So immediately that fish, when it was hooked, it went for structure and tried to break the fluorocarbon off on the wood. It also was smart enough to alert all the other fish in the area. All the other ones were really ready to bite until they realized that one was freaking out. So we're gonna make our way up river and uh, look, look for some other deep holes with lots of fish in it. So let's roll out. Give you a little history as to why the indigenous people can harvest as much as they want and any time they want. Because traditionally the indigenous people were the original stewards of the land. They lived with the land, taking only what they needed, and that is a dead deer. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's fine. Oh my god. Ooh, yuck. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, so back, back to the history lesson, seeing a dead deer. And it wasn't until 1923 after the Europeans showed up and offered these treaties that were heavily worded with technical lawful jargon. And once signed by the, the, the seven nations of Scugog, Hiawatha, Curve Lake, Alderville, Ramah First Nation, Georgina Island, and Christian Island, when all their leaders signed the treaty, they relinquished their rights, thinking that they were just giving a piece of land to the Europeans. The indigenous people only had an idea of trade, there was no such thing as currency. So thinking that we take a piece of the land and you can have a piece of our money, that seemed like a fair deal at the time, not knowing that they relinquished all their harvesting rights. That was 95 years, indigenous people couldn't live the way that they used to. When the crown finally recognized Oh yeah, they're people and they should be able to live the way they used to. A lot of people were still hesitant to, to exercise their rights. And especially since all the criticism and racism that still exists. So the idea of seeing people exercise their harvesting rights is a little bit tough for some people to swallow when they see them fishing technically out of season. So it's just a little bit of history lesson for you history buffs out there if you wanted to know why, why we have these rights and why we should use them. So enough of all this education, let's get down to fishing. Got it.
Extend the net. Good. All right. Let's just get him in the net. That's a nice buck. He's probably got one more run in him, and then you can scoop him. Oh, he's, he's done now. He's done now. Here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. It's okay. Oh, no, it's not okay. Oh, now it's okay. Okay, coming in, coming in. And scoop. Come on. Holy shit. And scoop. Lift. Good. Uh, Brianna is protected under the me shake principle, no, which one. allows your common law or spouse the ability to harvest with their partner who is indigenous. She's not fishing with a rod. She doesn't have any, she's not having any part of that, but she is helping me net the fish. Boy. Hooks in his mouth. Separate one, not ours. Oh. Yeah, it's actually quite common. Okay. There it is. There's our first fish that we're going to be harvesting today. This is a beautiful buck, steelhead, big kite. It's the mouth hook at the end. That's how you know it's a male. We're going to take her, take him out quite quickly here with the stick. And flip. Dude, well first what we gotta do say Miigwech Igu Miigwech Kujimnado Lay better on some tobacco, give thanks for what we're doing here and for allowing this fish to choose us. Well thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something again. Uh, give us a subscribe. We've got a lot more cool stuff to go over. Um, this fish will be completely taken apart and then donated to um, well, my supervisor. <laughs> and she will get it out to the appropriate parties. It's been a lot of fun. Um, trout opener for Gen Pop opens up next week. We might be part of that crowd. We most likely will be part of that crowd. So next time we do one of these educational videos, there's going to be a lot more, a lot more anglers on the river. Thanks for watching. Remember, when harvesting, you're thinking about seven generations ahead. Sustainable, ethical harvesting. I'll see you next time.